dear students welcome you all to first year english online classes and i am from government pu college alanki in this video i am going to help you review the concept of tense concept of tense is a topic you have already been taught in the previous school so in this video before going ahead with the more complex grammatical items that you are supposed to study in the first year text let us review the one that you have already learnt in the previous school tense is the most important grammatical item in english language tense means time and there are as many as three times in english language present past and future and each time has four aspects that are they are uh, simple progressive perfect and perfect progressive that means simple present tense present continuous tense present perfect tense present perfect continuous tense so each time has a four aspects so in total you have 12 tenses to study you have of course studied all these tenses in the previous school and in this video i am going to review if you are ready let us begin let's begin with the simple present tense first one is simple simple is the aspect and present is the time simple is the aspect and present is the time simple present tense this is the first one i undertake to discuss with you the first aspect is formation and the second aspect is function let us look at how simple present tense is to be formed let's look at it it is formed with either base form or with s form this is how it is and here i am taking the verb take as the verb and it is the representative i cannot use all the verbs on this blackboard or on this board and that is why i am taking only take as the representative term if in the sentence or the sentence you are going to construct take is the main verb this is how you have to place it either in a base form or in s form so base form and s form these are the two forms you have to choose from and when there is a two, when when you have to choose between these two you must know when to choose base form when to choose s form it is quite a simple it is chosen on the basis of the subject that precedes the verb in affirmative sentence there will be subject in the beginning and it is followed by verb i am only writing the verb i am not going to write the subject here you have to assume one subject before this verb so if the subject before i mean after which the verb is to be placed uh, is in uh, first person singular and plural number if it is second person singular and plural if it is a third person plural then you go for the base form if the verb sorry if the subject before which or after which the verb is to be placed uh, is is a third person singular in a number then you have to use the s form takes so uh, let me substitute the same if the subject is i you use the base form take i take if the subject is we you take the base form we take if the subject is you you take the base form you take if the subject is a third person plural you go for the same form that means they if the subject is they you use the base form take suppose the subject of your sentence is third person singular in number then you go for the s form takes the s form is easily formed you have to use s to the base form and form the s form and it is called s form because s is added it is aptly called s form so when the subject is third person singular that means if the subject is he you use the s form he takes the subject is she you use the s form she takes if the subject is 
it you take the s form it takes so this is how it is you come to know that in order to construct a sentence with its verb in a simple present tense you have to choose between base form and s form and you now know when the base form is to be chosen when the s form is to be chosen and then the next aspect is a function and it is all the more important because if you do not know the application or if you do not know the function or if you do not know the use of a particular tense you cannot make the best use of it in your conversation and that is why you have to focus more on this aspect function use application what is the situation this particular tense is to be used at the time of conversation first one is habit suppose you are referring to a habitual action use this tense simple present tense if you are referring to a habitual action suppose you are in the hotel and your friend inquires do you take tea and he is making use of a simple present tense in interrogative sentence and you have to answer I take tea suppose you are in the habit of uh, taking tea you answer his question or inquiry saying yes of course I take tea suppose you are not in the habit of uh, taking tea then you say no I do not I do not uh, take tea I take tea so thus this simple present tense is used to express habit or habitual action and it is not the only function it can be made use of in another situation as well and that is a fact suppose you are referring to a fact in your sentence in a science text they refer to fact because science deals with the facts so in a science text you come across a simple present tense very often suppose you might have heard your chemistry teacher making a sentence of this kind acids taste sour he is making use of a simple present tense because he is referring to a fact acid tasting sour is a scientific fact and that is why he uses a simple present tense acids taste sour and bases taste bitter this is how it is you refer to fact using a simple present tense and then there is another function of a simple present tense and that is referring to planned future action planned future action suppose you want to refer to a planned future action you can make use of a simple present tense for example the cm visits kumta next week look at this sentence the action is a cm visiting kumta and it takes place in the next week near future but you express this action using the simple present tense and it's very interesting you can use a simple present tense to express futurity as well so this is all about a simple present tense simple present tense is formed using either base form or s form of the finite verb and then the function you use this uh, simple present tense to ex to express a habitual action to refer to fact and to express a planned future action as well okay let's uh, move on to the second tense and that is present progressive present progressive is uh, the second uh, uh, tense we have to deal with and the first aspect is a uh, formation let's uh, look at the formation of a present progressive tense it is uh, formed using either am it is uh, formed using either is or are and then it is uh, followed by verb in with ing form that means taking that means taking you use or you form this tense using either am or is or are plus main verb ing added to it quite simple but 
since here are three helping verbs and out of these three only one is to be chosen at a time you must know when to choose am when to choose is when to choose are once again it is decided on the basis of the subject that precedes the verb you use the subject and you have to look at the number and the person of the subject in order to choose the right helping verb if you do not choose the right helping verb there will not be concurred in your sentence and it leads to grammatical error when to choose am you are quite familiar with the use of am you know that if the subject is i you use use am if the subject is a third person singular you use is if the subject is a third person plural the subject is a first person plural if the subject is a second person then you use are let me substitute with i use use am i am taking tea with the third person singular you use is he is taking tea she is taking tea with the uh, third person plural with the first person plural and second person singular and plural you take are that means you are taking tea they are taking tea we are taking tea so this is how present progressive tense is formed using one of these helping verbs plus a main verb with ing added to it formation is quite simple let's look at the function what is the situation this tense is to be made use of in the situation is to refer to the action happening action happening at the time of speaking at the time of speaking the action that has started and is on when you are speaking you refer, sorry you use present continuous tense okay action happening at the time of speaking let me um, give you one example take for example uh, the sentence i am teaching you english grammar i am teaching you english grammar look at this sentence the verb is in present continuous tense am teaching i have chosen am among these three because the subject of my sentence is i likewise you can construct another sentence you are all listening to my lecture in this sentence are listening is the verb and you know that the verb is in present continuous tense and you also know that the helping verb chosen by me is are i have chosen are here because the subject you is second person and with the second person singular and plural are is to be taken you are not supposed to take is or you are not supposed to take am if you use any of these two initiative of r you are committing a grammatical error and you lose mark in examination and in your conversation you are made fun of being completely ignorant of helping verbs usage of helping verb and that is why you have to be careful actioning happening at the time of speaking i am teaching you english you are all listening to me these are the two examples i can give here and there are many more you can get to know more about it by meeting your teacher or contacting or approaching your teacher and this has another function also this one has another function another function is to refer to action that takes place in near future action taking place taking place in near future action taking place in near future that is another function of a present continuous tense for example for example i am meeting you next week look at this sentence the action is meeting and it takes place next week but still you can use a present continuous tense I am meeting you next week likewise you can make another sentence like mr john is buying a new car next week is buying a new car next week recent future or a near future action is expressed through present continuous tense 
but this uh, tense is a little bit uh, tricky because all the finite verbs cannot be placed in this particular tense the verbs you know are uh, divided into two categories the first one is uh, dynamic and another one is static certain words refer to action whereas certain words refer to state the verbs that uh, i mean the verb that expresses action can be placed in present continuous tense whereas the verb that expresses a state or refers to state cannot be placed in this particular tense and that is why you have to be careful while placing a particular verb in present continuous tense you must be aware of the two categories of verbs for example take it is a dynamic verb and the action is referred to for example uh, buy to buy is another word that refers to action and that is why the sentence is okay when you uh, make a sentence like this he is buying a new car next week likewise uh, listening likewise uh, uh, talking likewise uh, delivering a lecture all these verbs are action words and they can be used in present continuous tense whereas uh, there are certain verbs like uh, uh, the word verb like uh, the verb uh, own the verb have these verbs etc there are many more uh, static verbs you have to approach your teacher to know more about it these verbs are static in the sense that the word like or the verb like does not express action the word uh, own does not express action the word have does not express action they express uh, only state and that is why avoid using such words in uh, present continuous tense see what happens if uh, such verbs are used in present continuous tense instead of uh, say, sorry instead of saying i like sweets you say i am liking sweets and the sentence i am liking sweets does not sound right if you are familiar with the english language at least to some extent you come to know that it sounds odd it sounds awkward to make a sentence of this uh, this kind i am liking sweets is wrong instead of that you have to say or you have to use a simple present tense i like sweets instead of i am liking sweets suppose own the word own is to be used you must be aware that the verb own is once again static and it cannot be used in present continuous tense mr john is owning two cars and this sentence is completely wrong since the verb own is static since you have used it in present continuous tense the sentence is erratic you can correct the sentence changing the simple sorry present continuous tense to simple present tense instead of saying john is owning two cars you can say john owns two car this sounds better not better it sounds correct the last one is have even have have is both dynamic and uh, uh, static if you use it as a static verb avoid using present continuous tense for example i am having a class now we here students are saying or constructing a sentence of this kind and this sentence is grammatically wrong i am having a class is wrong because here the verb have is a uh, static and that is why you must say i have a class now shall we go to the canteen your friend inquires and you say no i cannot come because i have a class now not i am having a class so this is how it is but have is also dynamic in situations like this uh, I, he was having tea when i met him this is how you can make a sentence here in this uh, second situation the verb have is used as a dynamic verb and that is why i am having tea or he was having tea this sentence is okay but i am having a class it is uh, wrong so this is uh, something about uh, present continuous tense okay present is uh, the time progressive is the aspect and these two combine together to time and aspect combine together to make present progressive tense and it is formed using either am 
or is or are and plus main verb with ing added to it this is the formation and the functions are two mainly two there are more functions action happening at the time of speaking and action taking place in near future this is something about present continuous tense and i have also told you of how you have to guard against guard against using this particular tense with the certain static verbs and the third one the third tense form is present perfect present perfect tense this is the third one and the formation how to form this particular tense the simple present tense you know is formed out of base form it is formed out of s form present continuous tense it is formed out of one of the three helping verbs plus present participle form of the verb and here you have to go for a new helping verb and that is have you have to use either have or has and here again you have two helping verbs out of which only one is to be chosen at a time have or has and then the main verb is to be placed in a past participle form so this is the formation using either have or has as the helping verb and the main verb to be placed in past participle form this is the v3 form and you must be familiar with it only being aware of the base form of a new verb is not enough to use a particular verb in your conversation suppose you have to construct a present perfect tense then you are in need of the third form v3 form of that particular verb and that is why you must be aware of this you must learn all these things by heart sometimes the verb e takes ed participle to form a past and past participle form not always in the case of the verb want it takes ed participle to form a past participle form in the case of receive it takes ed participle to form past participle form whereas there are certain verbs they take a special form and that is why there is no rule to form the past participle in the case of irregular verbs and that is why you have to make a list of them list of irregular verbs and should learn all these things by heart you have to memorize only then you can master this and you can use present perfect tense in your conversation otherwise you are not allowed you will make a grammatical mistake and since here are two helping verbs have and has and only one is to be chosen you must know when to choose have when to choose has it is once again decided by the number and a subject sorry by the number and a person of the subject that precedes the verb if the subject is i that means a first person singular if the subject is a first person plural v if the subject is a second person singular and plural if the subject is a third person plural then you go for have that means with the i with the we with you with the they you use have as the helping verb or auxiliary it is also called auxiliary you have to use have as the helping verb with these pronouns if the pronoun is a third person singular then you go for has if the pronoun is he he has taken if the pronoun is she she has taken with it you have to take has so this is how it is have and has between these two only one is to be chosen on the basis of the number and the person of the subject you choose one of these two and then the main verb is to be placed in the past participle form see this is something about the formation of present perfect tense and then the second aspect and that is a function the use the application the situation where this particular tense is to be used you can use this tense to refer to an action action that is complete action that is complete at the time of speaking complete at the time of speaking 
see so this is the use to refer to the action complete at the time of speaking present perfect tense is used for example in a classroom situation you are in front of your uh, mathematics teacher and he asks you have you submitted your assignment he asks he inquires and you answer his question saying yes sir i have submitted my assignment look at this sentence i have submitted my assignment this sentence is fine you are referring to an action that is complete in the sentence i have submitted my assignment the action is submitting the assignment and this action is complete and it has a relevance at the time of speaking as well in such a situation this tense is to be made use of present perfect tense is to be made use of and here you have to take care against using certain adverbs sometimes you we use adverbs with or in present perfect tense and it leads to grammatical error uh, certain adverbs go with this tense and they are just and already i have just finished my meal this sentence is okay i have just the word just comes with often comes with this i mean uh, tense i have just completed or i have just had my tea i do not want any more i have just had so this is how it is i have already submitted my assignment even this sentence is okay i have already submitted this assignment already and just are the two words that always or often seen that are often seen in this present perfect tense but adverbs like last week adverbs like yesterday are not to be used in this tense for example when your teacher asked you have you submitted your assignment if you answer the question like this i have submitted my assignment yesterday sir if you say like this sir i have submitted my assignment yesterday if you make a sentence of this kind the sentence is wrong because you are not supposed to use the adverb yesterday in this particular tense there is another tense where you can refer to time where you can refer sorry where you can use adverb whereas in present perfect tense you are not supposed to use adverb like yesterday adverb like uh, today something like that you cannot use that you have to take care of that so this is uh, something about to present a perfect tense action complete at the time of uh, speaking and the formation is uh, either have or has is to be taken as a helping verb and the main verb is to be placed in past participle form so so far we have dealt with the simple present tense we have dealt with the present progressive tense and we have dealt with the present perfect tense as well and the next one is present and the next one is present perfect progressive present perfect progressive is the next tense the tense is uh, present perfect and uh, the aspect is progressive and how to frame or how to form present perfect progressive tense and this is how it is you have to use either have or has as helping verb and then been is the word to be used here and then main verb is to be used in present participle form look at this have or has been taking i have been taking he has been taking tea this is how it is and you know when to choose have when to choose has and the same rule applies here with 
I with V you take have with sorry with I with V with you with they you take a have as the helping verb and then when it comes to using has the subject should be third person singular he she it with he she it you take has and then been is to be taken it remains unchanged uh, irrespective of the subject you use the same word been is to be used here and then the main verb is to be placed with the ing added to it so this is the formation of present perfect continuous tense or present perfect progressive tense what is the function or what is the use of this particular tense that is the question now formation is then the use is or the situation is to refer to an action that extends over a, a period of a time let me write it to refer to an action that extends that extends over a period of time over a period of time so this is the situation where this tense is to be used for example you make a sentence of this kind let me make one a sentence uh, you have been or you were introduced to english language when you were in class 1 and from class 1 to class 10 for the period of 10 years you are studying english language so this is what i mean by an action that extends over a period of time that is what is meant by action extending over a period of time so that action can be placed in present perfect continuous tense you can make a sentence of this kind or you can see me making a sentence of this kind you have been studying english for the past 10 years have been studying i have used the word have here because the subject i have taken is you with you have is to be taken you know that if you take has it leads to grammatical error you have to be very careful you have been studying english for the past 10 years so in this sentence you find that an action that extends over a period of time is referred to so this is something about present perfect progressive tense you can make as many sentences as you please at home looking at this video looking at this chart you come to know of the formation you come to know of the function and looking at this chart looking or watching this video time and again you can master these i mean these things and make as many sentences as possible so that you will have mastery over it so that you can write the answer in the examination and you can use the right sentence at the time of conversation so this is how it is and the next one is after this here in this chart i refer to present time the aspect is simple progressive perfect and perfect progressive whereas in the next chart i am referring to simple past tense simple past simple past simple past is the next tense and the formation formation is in the case of a take it is a took the v2 form of the verb in the case of take it is took in the case of want it is wanted in the case of receive it is received you come to know that some verbs take ed participle to form its past and past participle forms whereas some verbs will have a special form 
the verb that takes ed participle to form its past and past participle forms is called regular verb and it is quite easy but the verb that takes a special form for past and past participle form is called irregular verb and that is why irreg since irregular verb takes a different special form you must list them down and learn all of them by heart otherwise you will be at loss you do not know the past form you do not know the past participle form and without past and past participle form you cannot construct a sentence with its verb in a simple past tense with its verb in a present perfect tense for present perfect uh, or a simple past you need this particular form took sometimes it takes ed okay so this is the formation quite simple and then the fun function what is the use what is the function it is used to refer to an action that has happened in the past past action action happened action happened in the past action happened in the past okay you refer to an action that happened in the past for example in a sentence of this kind i submitted my assignment yesterday whereas when you use present perfect tense you say i have submitted my assignment whereas here you can refer to the time when you submitted your assignment i submitted my assignment yesterday in present perfect tense you cannot use adverbial whereas in simple past tense you can use the adverbial yesterday i submitted my assignment yesterday i went to a movie yesterday it is another sentence i went to a movie yesterday i submitted my assignment yesterday so these are the two examples for a simple past tense the care to be taken only in a simple past tense you can use the adverbial whereas in present perfect tense you cannot use you cannot use the adverbial this is where you have to focus on and should master this okay in a simple past tense you can refer to you can refer to adverbial whereas here if you use adverbial the sentence becomes the sentence becomes erratic so this is enough for today this is enough for today and in the next video let us continue and let us continue and deal with the more tenses of english language thank you